Welcome back to Mail in the Cart. This is Mickey, and today I am checking out some things that I wanted to test out. The first thing I wanted to test out is I've had this palette of ink, Bombay inks in this thing for a long time. And I had done a project with it like a year ago, and I wanted to see if I could either clean this up and get these out or um, reconstitute them and be able to use them again. And I found that if you have a little spray bottle of um, alcohol, you can re-wet them and they will be workable again. So who knew? I thought I was just gonna have to throw this out, but I guess that I can still use these after I, I have sprayed this whole thing. Um, I guess it helps to get uh, plastic wrap. This is that, um, that sticky sided plastic wrap where I just have been able to seal each well, kind of. <laughs> and it sort of kind of helps keep them. Remember, if you do use inks on your brushes, you'll have to use soap and water to clean them because um, they don't re really uh, clean too well if you use water because it's a, a solvent based thing. So there's like a little test tip number one. The other thing I wanted to do was test out, yeah, unfortunately with gouache, I've not, there's no solution <laughs> to getting these to not crumble. And you can add, oh, I've got stuff over here. You can add um, glycerin to them and honey and um, some gum arabic and it will help but they'll not always work. Like all of these do have glycerin in them and honey as well. And nope, they still crack. So um, the, the choice is yours if you wanna you know, deal with it or not. Um, you could just use them right out of the tube. I used up the tubes and threw them away. So this is what I have left of my um, whole bing gouache. I did buy some Lucas um, gouache. These are on sale now at Jerry's Artorama for like eight bucks for 12 of these tubes. And as you know, I've been talking up Lucas quite a lot. And I had recently bought and reviewed their 18, 1862 watercolors, which I love. They're all in here somewhere. And I think there's like, I think I bought like 12 or 13. But this um, is considered the student and the um, professional grade. I believe there's just more in the tube. So I would just try the student. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, like an extreme difference, but um, just my first view of them, I'm noticing that um, I have, let's see, all of these are light fast. This is not light fast. Well, not as light fast. These are considered good, good, good. And I kind of wanted to find some yellows that are a little bit better than good. And there's a yellow ochre. It's quite a good selection. You get a white and the dreaded black, which is unfortunate. But um, for $8 to try these out, I don't think that's a bad deal. Um, I'm not sure how long this deal is going on there. I would just go and grab them real quick. Um, you can get free shipping uh, if you order stuff um, there, um, totaling $35. So I do that every once in a while. I've stopped buying stuff. This is um, from Christmas. So I wanted to check how these two um, compare. So um, I don't have the tubes anymore, but I'm pretty sure I can figure out what's close with these. So this is kind of a CAD. This is ultramarine, which would be this one. It's permanent green, somewhere in there. And then the black and the white. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So why don't I just go ahead and swatch these and then we'll do these in comparison. And I'll see you at the end. So I guess I wasn't recording that whole thing, but <laughs> anyway, I saved the last one to show you, even though I don't ever use black. Um, but it could be used for grays, I guess. Um, kind of what I've had to do to fill these. I've had to um, do this <laughs> and then squeeze out all the air until I get to a certain point and 
I've squeezed out quite a bit here. And then I can squeeze them into the half pan, fill, overfill, and just sort of let it sit. And then hopefully there'll be a little film that dries over the top. But um, I don't know, it seems to be a little less um, than they offer. So <laughs> it's only eight bucks, so I'm not really trying to complain here, but I'm just like, well, that was a lot of air. <laughs> um, but after looking for the pigments, um, I couldn't find them at first. I was like, where the heck are the pigments on these things? And then I found them under this little um, lip of um, paper here. So they do have pigment numbers. Um, and then they have opacity and light fast information. And um, it looks like the blue wool scale between six and seven and seven and eight. So they, they do, do, do them in the blue wool scale. Um, anywhere um, from seven to eight is best in blue wool scale and one to two is worse. So um, they're saying that even the ones with the two stars are still pretty high up there as far as um, light fastness. Um, so yeah, let me actually do a time lapse for real this time and show you the swatches. Okay, so it looks like um, when I swatch these out that the Lucas student, look at my water, whoa. The Lucas student gouache is more of a opaque watercolor than it is, you know, a um, good gouache. Um, burnt sienna, it came out really opaque. I had to do another layer of yellow ochre. These are all one layer. Of pigment on this side and these were actually from these wet uh, half pans so I'm thinking there's some things that I can do with this student grade gouache that's more watercolorish um, techniques which it make takes you know makes my gears turn um, comparatively I would say that of course you are buying hoping gouache for the pigment um, because it just, you know, it completely blows the Lucas student grade out of the water every single time. Um, if for comparison, um, the yellow ochre next to the other yellow ochre, they use PY42 and 43 in their yellow ochre. Um, for their burnt sienna, it's a lot more orange um, tone because, uh, I don't know, you get more of that PR101 in there. Um, they, Lucas has more of the PBR24, so maybe that's a cooler tone. Um, oops, sorry. Moving things around. Okay. Um, you can't really compare the, ye oh yeah, you can. The, um, lemon yellows, um, primary, there's way more pigment in the whole bean than there is in the primary yellow. I'll just show you. It almost seems like there's some white in this. But it comes off really translucent. I mean, I'm, I'm not even covering up the black lines there. So, you know, makes your thoughts turn, you know, like, hmm, what can I use that for? So it looks like these paints are suspended in a lot of, um, a lot of their binder, which is good or bad, <laughs> depending. But the whole bean white was a heck of a lot more white, <clears throat> light white or a cooler tone white than the um, Lucas. Lucas is definitely more of a bone, um, white then and a whole bean it looks like it's a little bit more blue I don't know if I got any blue in there it looks like I have a little bit of blue in there so it's my fault let's see if I can get a better swatch now that I know what I'm doing or what I'm seeing so yeah the whole bean gouache is way more white 
so um, yeah so I wanted to test these out to see how well the um, student grade did next to the gouache and I completely learned a lot I like that they um, offer the um, primaries of uh, lemon yellow magenta and cyan though so but I mean Hoping gouache blows them out of the water. Um, I haven't tried any other gouaches but these, um, so let me know what's your favorite and um, let me find something else I can show you. So I have a couple last tips um, and tricks and the first one is whenever you see these grab one because it's an instant palette like you can put you can squeeze paints into these and then on the top you have an ink like a mixing area so don't throw these away, use them for a little travel kit. The other thing is if you have a um, water brush that you're not using, fill it with um, a few drops of ink and a few drops of, um, well, mostly water. Not a few drops, you fill it up with water. And um, you'll have an instant gray um, marker, not marker, but brush pen. And these are good for, um, I just want to test it first. Whoops! So here we have a really dark version. So this fills a lot of background area in, um, which I use a lot. I use this um, for a lot of my Inktober kind of sketches. Um, and the other thing I use for um, watercolor paintings is this Koi set. And it's, um, I'm not sure if I've ever reviewed it, but I love it. And it's a little secret I use. Um, and I've swatched them out here and when I come to finishing paintings or when I get around to it um, I will go around and then do a little um, on my shadows with them and this sort of helps expedite the process and what's great about them is they're water soluble and you can blend them in so these are really great to have just on hand as a little um, tip, a little trick. So I am showing you this. And there's a lot of my paintings that I get to this stage and I'm like, I, I just need to stop because I will overwork it. But then I'll go back with to them again and change them again. After I've posted them and everything and Everybody's seen them at their <laughs> their worst stage. So, yeah, this is a really fun fun tip and trick. So, I hope this video helped a little, give you inspire you and show you what the uh, Lucas gouache is like. And I'll see you in the next one. And take care.